a Northern Reserves officer. So we started our sort of route down doing butterfly surveys on our Northern Reserves originally before um, scaling out. So I think some of you might have started back when uh, Jenny Hayward was um, sort of scaling up and doing the surveys. And ultimately it's because we wanted the data from a, a very uh, into looking view of on our site, it's a useful data set to see what's going on in, with abundance and you've got the transects. So it, it's split up into sections and different habitat types on sites. Um, so when Holly left the trust, uh, I took on the mantle alongside, I do the uh, breeding bird survey and manage that survey as well, which I know some, I can see some individuals here like Graham, um, who do also do that uh, on for the trust sites. But it's very much, um, although, it's very good for our own reserves. Uh, my thing was, well, actually I want to benchmark and it's much, much more valuable than just even on our site-based data because obviously you get it regional or even national. Um, so was, I was very pleased when Nick and Martin got in touch, uh, wanted to work more closely because I thought, yes, absolutely. Because I'm as interested in data from outside and not like non wider T sites as I am on uh, wider T sites mainly because um, you get a better, bigger, more comprehensive picture of what's going on. Um, so anyway, I think that's the best opportunity now to introduce Nick, um, who's taken on the role of, as the Butterfly Conservation Transect Coordinator, um, who from the YDVT volunteer point of view, I guess will be new to many of you. Um, so over to you, Nick. Can I just interject and say we are recording this, so uh, please turn your videos off if you don't want to be recorded. Oh, yes, sorry. Yes. No, I just thought I'd jump in. Sorry, <laughs> carry on, Nick. <laughs> uh, good, even good evening, everyone. Uh, it's, it's great to welcome you for what I think is probably the first time there's been an opportunity for the whole county transect walkers to be together. Um, so, yeah, we are recording this event only for the simple reason there are some people who wanted to attend who couldn't make it. So that is for them. Uh, please, can you keep your microphones muted unless you wish to speak and please use the chat which i'm just waving my uh, uh pointer around if you wave your pointer around in this direction you should see the chat box appear now if you can ask questions as we go along pop your questions in in the chat and then uh catherine is going to uh, be our moderator and um, rather than have all of us speaking, which with this number of people gets a bit of a mess, uh, she will ask the questions on your behalf. Uh, but there will be lots of chances for you to interact. And I'll come to that in a minute. First, I want to say thank you for all your work. And I know what a commitment it takes to do our job. Judging the weather, juggling, life at short notice and coordinating with your fellow walkers it's it's a challenge uh trying to find that slot in a week uh can often be quite difficult but i want to say you are the backbone and the unsung heroes of nature conservation secondly this meeting is about you we want and need your feedback it's also a chance to get to know one another and the huge variety of sites we record from and look back at last season. So the middle part of the session, we'll be going through those people who are attending, we'll go through uh, their sites, very brief description. And uh, if you want to make a contribution at that point, then please unmute and give us, uh, give us your comments. So about half of you volunteers uh, are on Yorkshire wildlife sites. The, other, the others are on forestry commission, biodiversity projects, farmland, national parks, national trust, RSPB. Uh, most of us are involved in UK BMS. Uh, that's the 26 weeks of the year. Uh, but also here tonight, uh, there's a number of wider countryside uh, uh, transect walkers and single species transect walkers slightly different uh i'm hoping we're at 35 people so we've got probably nearly 40 transects represented here tonight uh in last uh last year 45 transects were active in yorkshire so the third thing i want to say 
Zoom really does give us new opportunities and allowed something much more substantial and much more inclusive than the York get together of, of previous years. This is a new medium uh, and I don't intend to kill you with, with, with PowerPoint, I promise. Uh, we have new ways to be interactive and I hope I can show you some of these ways this evening. Not forgetting the elephant in the room, we are in the slap in the middle of a very difficult pandemic, uh, which started tomorrow, a year ago. Uh, although we can expect to start our transects much more as normal this year, I think we are safely within the roadmap currently. Uh, and to do so, we still need to be conscious that we are still in a very critical part of this pandemic. We still need to avoid personal contact and avoid long distance travel. So unless we are shielding, then we are on course for the moment for starting the recording week, which this year starts on a Thursday. So the start of the week is Thursday, 1st of April next week. OK, a little bit about me, just so you're aware of my background. So as you can tell, I come from the West Country. I was brought up on the Cotswolds. My playground was a bath stone quarry. Uh, my days were spent, summer days were spent watching and chasing butterflies, which followed by a 40 year career in horticultural management that got in the way of butterflies. I then changed career uh, and built a wireless broadband network in uh, the Vale of Mowbray, Yorkshire, uh, for those people who can't get BT, um, which is actually about uh, for, this is a really frightening statistic. Still, 95% of the area of North Yorkshire has very little or no broadband. I was lucky enough to connect people like Yorkshire Vet, Yorkshire Shepherdess, and a chap called Rishi. Uh, I suspect you've heard of him. Um, he seems to be keeping the country going at the moment. So last in April last year, uh, Butterfly Conservation Yorkshire restructured I became a webmaster and immediately we went into lock, lock, lockdown, which was kind of lucky because it gave me lots of time to uh, rebuild uh, the website and think about the future, as well as walking my two transects, which are Bishop Wood and Three Hags Wood Meadow in Selby. And I've also created uh, a couple of other uh, transects um, I also undertook a review of our formal recording effort and began to appreciate that we knew very little about your work or indeed its huge importance. The, my report looked at what we do and why, how we do it, where we do it, how well we do it, and what we need to do for the future. Um, more on this at the end. So let's start with a slide. I'm going to share my screen. I hope everybody can see that and start the presentation. I'm going to concentrate on the, the data and where it comes from and where it goes to, because that's sometimes something we don't talk about. And I remember as when I started, it all seemed to go into a big black hole called UK BMS and not much, or you seemed a very small cog in a very big machine. So this is the big machine. Uh, the blue dots are transects, the red dots are wider countryside uh, squares. And you can see the concentrations in the countryside. And I'm always very jealous of Hampshire, uh, the home counties. Um, but you can probably pick out Yorkshire there. You'll see hot spots around Yorkshire, the Tabular Hills, Horn Hornby area, and of course the, dale, the top of the dales, uh, all very rich in butterfly sites and therefore monitored carefully. So the, currently we have 50 active sites, 45 were were monitored last year, and we have 21 wider countryside. 
And we have about 120 volunteers and they together do 4,000 hours of work. Imagine if we had to pay for that. So we produce about um, 1,200 records that make up about 50,000 total records of the Yorkshire data set. Uh, the transect data is, is important because it's used to look at trends. This is in contrast to uh, butterflies of the new millennium, which are casual, casual records, which give a very different picture of our butterflies. So they tend to look at occurrences and give us very few clues, only a, only a, only a few clues about abundance. But you put the, both of them together and you have a much better view of uh, what's happening to our butterflies. So this very large data set that the country produces uh, allows scientists internationally who regard our data with the highest quality uh, to pick out the effects on abundance species rich, richness, richness in the UK because it's very fine grained recording. And you'll see here a little picture from our new, I'll just introduce our new online, I don't know if you've seen this, our online butterfly atlas. And we're actually looking here at uh, Dave Ramston's uh, um, Vice County VC64 and showing there's not many white squares that we've not, uh, not got figures from. So we've got a very complete set of figures. Um, this data is pivotal for the government's measurements on biodiversity because our data is so complete. And here's an example of what happens to our data. The big one is the UK biodiversity indicators last published last year, which I'm going to give some examples of the kind of data that uh, our stuff goes into, but not forgetting our own publications. So we do a, a, a review of the transects every five years. Um, and I think there's one due shortly. Um, and let's just move on to the kind of stuff that's in these reports. So I just picked out just a couple of examples here. This is um, the EU. We're very keen to figure out uh, because because a lot of us own work on uh, reserves. It doesn't always give us a, a, a picture of farmland, but usually a lot of transects have some farmland in them. And of course, we have the wider countryside scheme as well. As I was saying, our, our work it really is the canary in the cage for the health of our environment. So every five years we produce a state of the report um, and our data has important role to play, even more so in the future as farmers are paid on results to encourage nature through the new environmental land management scheme, which has just been introduced. And of course, not forgetting the target, the 3030 target you might have heard of, which is 30% of the land devoted to uh, nature by the year 2030. So looking at this, you will see the picture that, that's emerging in our farmland, which is um, Although we see a slight increase, you've got the typical uh, wide fluctuations, which is the dotted, the dotted uh, green line, which you can see here. Um, you can see that we are losing species. This gives you the, the, the uh, percentage of species which are increasing or decreasing. Uh, in the long term, there's a substantial decrease. In the short term, as you can see with this slight increase, um, that is not the whole picture. However, if we look at woodland here, you see the decrease now is nearly 50% in our number of species. Woodlands have been hit quite badly. I call it the great darkening of our wood woodlands as the management has deteriorated of our woodlands. But in recent times, it's decreased. This just gives you a picture of uh, what's happening out there. And uh, you'll notice some noticeable things about this 
and I can pick out, for example, things like the brown argus is increasing uh, because it's changed its diet. It now takes dove's foot crane's bull uh, and likes to live on stewardship stri strips on our farms. Holly blue is, is uh, really multiplied and uh, seen a big improvement, which we think is probably a lot to do with a response to climate change. And of course it has two generations, so more chance. And similarly with the whites, they, they're showing a, a short-term increase. Um, but there are some long-term losers, uh, such as the peacocks, some more tortoiseshells, although that might be changing, uh, the war, and of course the grayling. Um, but just moving on, you'll see here our habitat specialist, which probably more reflects the kind of stuff that happens on our reserves. Uh, we see there that uh, there's not, there are some increases, silver studded blue, blue for example, uh, large heath because they're now well preserved. They're uh, a priority insect. Uh, small blue is also a priority. Uh, we struggled a bit with the um, small pearl bordered, um, but the dukes are holding their own. Um, and the dark green fertility is definitely on the rise. I'm moving on now to uh, the next section, which is really looking at uh, this year. So what happened in 2020, 2020? Let's go back and just think for a second about 20, 2019, which for many of us was probably one of the best years we can remember, except if you're an old person like me who can remember 1976 uh, and what the summer was like. Uh, but you may also remember the disaster in 1977 that followed that drought and heat of 76. Was it going to be repeated? Was the big question everybody asked as the, the summer ended. And we then went into a extremely warm and very wet, if you remember. And I know a number of your transect sites were were flooded, uh, and we barely had a, a barely had a winter. And then we went into lockdown in the end of March, which was promptly the sun came out, and of course we had weeks and weeks of record record-breaking temperatures and sunshine, which uh, I remember with great fondness. But then it all changed in the end of May, uh, with a series of big Atlantic storms came roaring across at great speed uh, with downpours, and we were back into some flooding. And uh, uh, But it was warm between those, so a rather mixed year, but June was a, a pretty horrible month from memory. And I must admit, there are one, I think I missed, managed to miss two weeks. One of them was in June because of the weather and the other in July, again, because of the weather. I'm um, glad to report that uh, for most of you, you managed to do extremely good job during, during last year, apart from missing obviously the first six weeks, which we were all in lockdown. And then gradually as we unlocked, uh, you more than made up some of the losses You probably remember also how early the emergence of some of our species were. Uh, they were almost 10 to 14, some species were almost 10 to 14 days early. And 23 species in the UK had their, recorded their earliest ever emergence. It was an exceptional year. So I want to move now, on now, just look very briefly at the figures that I've managed to put together. I'm going to uh, just move, escape there. And I don't know if you've seen this on the website, but on the website, we, I've done a review of the 2020 season, going through what I've just gone through with you. 
But here we've got uh, a representation of a number of transects. I picked out uh, about 20 of those who had a fairly complete year, or I was able to fill in, fill in the gaps in the early part, because very few of us managed to record uh, through April and the first few couple of weeks of May. But uh, you might be interested to, to have a look at this and just see, you might see your site at the top. So we've got Paxton Bank. I know Ian and Graham are here tonight. Uh, Thorpe Marsh, which is Doncaster. Three Hagswood Meadow, which is a uh, transect I do. Bishop Wood, another one I do. Uh, Priory Fields in Hull, Leyburn, Old Glebe, uh, Whitcliffe, Catherine does, uh, Green Hammerton, uh, Strensel Common, and quite a few of you here tonight, I notice. Flat Slane it, uh, up it on the Cleveland Hills. Um, Upper Dunsford Cars, which is near York. Bishop Leonard near um, Ripon. Uh, Hornby Hill, Alabrim Bank on um, Tabular Hills, uh, Bishop Monkton, uh, Lee Green, which is uh, on the side of Bastow Wood, uh, Barla Common, um, it's Selby, and Milford Meadow, which is it's near Saltburn in uh, uh, near Redcar. And you see here, there's quite a consistent pattern as we look across. So here you'll see the number of transects where the species is down and the number of transects which the species are up. Uh, and you can also see here, these are all percentages, by the way. So what I did is calculated a five year average of um, each of the, uh, from each transect and uh, then compared this last year against this five-year av average. 2019 for, for many was a, a record year. Um, but it's interesting now to compare this year with the average of the last five years. But all these figures are as a percentage. So you see things like the, the skippers, the golden skippers are both down while the whites, the cabbage whites are both up, while the green vein white was down. Very difficult to assess things like dingy skipper because there's very few transects with them. And of course we were missing the early numbers and the same for the orange tip. Um, it was difficult and most of those figures are estimates. So please ignore those. Um, we also see the common blue was a little bit down, but not much. Uh, Red Admiral was down a lot after a good year, the last couple of years before that. And of course the Painted Lady almost disappeared and to a very low level uh, this last year. Small tortoiseshell, well, that's a very interesting story. Uh, every single transect that I looked at, small tortoiseshell was up. Uh, by sometimes a lot. So the average up was 130, 130%. And I think that's probably the headline. And I know, noticed Dave Ramson in his um, email from VC64 yesterday highlighted that one. Uh, while the others, the peacock and the commas, was somewhat down. Um, dark green fertility uh, is an interesting one because it appeared to have such a cracking year. I, I was seeing them all over the place um, and they certainly have spread to new new colonies, which is another interesting one. Silver washed, uh, there's only one transect, which is actually uh, my Bishop Wood, where it's seen on a regular basis, but it seems to have a, a poor year, uh, though not on my transect, it was quite average. Uh, speckled woods were down. Uh, Wall Brown was down, uh, Marvel White up, uh, Gatekeeper down a lot. And if I move this down, if I can, oop, no, I can't. I'm just going to switch to another screen. Now I can move it, I hope. Yes, here we go. So we can see 
ringlets were down. So this is quite strange and interesting that marble whites and meadow browns were up. And meadow browns in many places had a, a cracking year, uh, but not everywhere. So um, some sites have had very poor years. Um, so that's quite an interesting one to try and analyze out. And I think moisture here might have a lot to do with it. And I'd like to hear your views as we go around about what you think is uh, going on. Because uh, to me, it looks like it was a very, very dry spring. And although we had a wet, uh, very wet beginning to the year, uh, the, the, that, the drought that we had, well, certainly what I saw of it um, was it caused plants to really, really suffer and grasses suffered and leaves yellowed off prematurely. And I think some of the later um, grass eating uh, species suffered as a result. Uh, I think that might account for the skippers um, and the ringlets and uh, the gatekeeper in particular suffering somewhat. But I think the meadow brown, because it's that little bit earlier, did not suffer quite so much. But that's just my theory. Okay. I'm going to hand back now to. Uh, I'm going to hand back now to Philip. And what we want to do next is just go down. We're going to go in alphabetical order through the transects. So we're going to start with uh, um, actually three hags wood meadow, which happens to be um, mine. And I'll just show you on the website, if I can, find the right bit. Just take the opportunity quickly, Nick, to say like thanks for the like overview there, the analysis of looking at individual species across sites. Because I think that's something that a lot of um, recorders are probably be really interested in seeing how what trends they might see, how it plays out across. It's really useful. Yes, uh, that all that report is on the um, on the website, so it's actually here on. I hope you can see this. You can see transfer reports. That's where I've just come from. And you see my overview, the weather report, the results, and you see all your transects there. I managed to analyze a few more than this, uh, which we'll touch on again, probably through when we go through the list. But I'm going to move on now to, to uh, our transects and just give you a flavor of, uh, of, uh, of the different ones. So three hags wood. I've only only allowed myself twenty seconds per per transect because we've got a lot to get through, as you can imagine. Uh, so this is a former barley field, um, part of Eskrick Estates. Uh, the the mine behind it is uh, Ross Forbes Adams, uh, who own, owns uh, Skipwith Common, which is not far away. Uh, it's on the side of the A19, really accessible, absolute gorgeous place to go in the summer and see the uh, see the wildflowers. Um, they've made a really great job of uh, uh, restoring it into a, basically, it's a mixture of uh, planted copses um, with areas planted so they will be co um, coppice in the future. Around the around the edges of, of the woodland blocks, so it's it's part blocks of wood of trees, uh, with surrounding coppice, uh, hence the name wood meadow, which is a term used for a meadow in a in a wood. Uh, the old way of uh, uh, much of England was wood meadow, um, um, was an extremely productive system back in medieval days. So the first sections are through the meadow, but then we disappear in section five into woodland, and then a, a, a part of a, of, a, of a agricultural field, then through a, a, another uh, pasture, 
and then into a, a section of woodland. i uh, just give you a flavour of what it looks like and uh, the results here. And we had roughly equal number of losers and gainers. Uh, the total numbers were 10% up. That was mostly because of Meadow Browns. Uh, can I hand it now to uh, Philip for Ask and Bog? Yep. I got control. I you've got got. Yep. So Ask and Bog is the uh, Wildlife Trust's original. It's a very, it's a site that essentially made the the Wildlife Trust in Yorkshire coming to being. It was bought by uh, the famous chocolatiers of uh, York, uh, Francis Roundtree. Uh, Anna Roundtree and Francis Terry. Um, it's a it's a mosaic site. So as well as the uh, ancient woodland, it's also got the um, it, back in the early two thousands had some lottery funding to clear out some of the uh, tree growth to re restore some of the sort of wet uh, mosaic fen and meadow habitats. So it's a it's really a nice site, and well worth a visit if you're ever in the York area. And it's sort of a, a a survivor, well, of a recent development, but also of um, the sort of uh, glacier. So it's the where the A64 is, is the uh, terminal moraine, and it's all the water pulled up behind it. Um, so there's two, currently only two um, volunteers cover this site. I think it was originally set up by Eric Walkington back in, I think, as far as I'm aware, uh, started in, I think, 2016. So it's only had um, sort of four or five years worth of data. And I think David and Richard are both here that do the site, whether they want to say anything. I mean, certainly last year, I think they contributed something along the lines of over 16 hours uh, of, despite the lockdown, 16 hours worth of uh, survey time uh, over 13 dates. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a really accessible site. Well, I say accessible to get to, I mean, Richard will tell you that, um, the other issue we had with anyone else that does the YWT sites is that we, we furloughed a lot of staff once the pandemic hit, including reserve staff. So a lot of the sites ended up getting rather overgrown, more so than usual. Um, and Askenbog is definitely one of those sites that the SWAD can really uh, take over. So I know it's a difficult site um, to get around uh, in certain uh, sections of the transect, which I'm going to try and liaise with the uh, site manager to make sure that the the, the, the transit route has tried to be kept clear, which is the same for the, uh, a lot of the other sites as well. Um, but yeah, and the, the data there, so you can see that it, interestingly, it's a, it's a one that the skipper's numbers are up on, um, despite the other uh, trend, which can be expected as a nature reserve that you might see different trends that we would elsewhere. But uh, interesting, I mean, the Brimstone one um, is an interesting one that's it's gone down. Because uh, it's a species that seems to record, or people notice certainly notice more. Whether that's down, they don't look at abundance. But uh, but also another one is smart tartar shell and uh, gatekeeper, as well as the meadow browns uh, are doing very well on site. But I don't know if uh, David or Richard, if they here, want to say anything about the site or not. I mean, you don't have to if you don't want to, but it's it's open or free for you to comment. I'll take the silence as a pass, or a hard pass. You want to move on to uh, yes, Ballif next... Ballifield? Is that one of yours? It's not. It's one of yours. Ballifield. Is it one of yours or one of mine? No, no, it's um, <laughs> not, not one I recognise. Okay. I'm not, I'm not familiar with that site. Okay, so uh, it's it's uh, it, well, actually, Paul Paul Millard is here. He might be able to tell us a, a good deal more because uh, I'm not familiar with this one. So it's an old spoil heap of uh, lead mine um, uh, on the side of Ellerbeck, which is a carper bee at the top end of Wensley Dale, so further up from Maysgarth. Um, lots of wonderful plants grow in that kind of uh, scree. Um, and the northern brown argus it was recorded because it's a northern brown argus site um but not uh not seen i think recently and we have don't have a regular recorder at the moment 
So that one's looking for a recorder. Uh, the last review I did was only for 2019. I couldn't do one for last year. Uh, but in general, it seems quite uh, uh, numbers are have been on the up um, and it's generally looking OK. Paul, do you want to butt in and say anything? Uh, well, um, it's it's not walked much and uh, it's as is the case for many of the sites in VC65. Um, there there isn't much of a local population we really could do with this site being walked more frequently. It's also the only site in Yorkshire for the forester moth, and therefore that's 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 a, a site of uh, great uh, of high priority for us. I had one report last year of a northern brown argus on the site, but it was exceptional in that it was in September. And it, uh, I was sent a photograph, it looked like a northern brown argus. Uh, it is very, very rare for the northern brown argus to have a second generation. Um, certainly not in the Dales as it's been recorded before, but that's probably because um, it had a um, very early season in VC64 where I do my transects mm. and the earliest earliest uh, on record another one of those so it's the 20th of may um so there was plenty of time to fit in a second generation and it's gonna have to get some more attention this year and if anybody wants to help out with that they'd be um, most welcome thank you paul uh, philip do you want to move on to uh Bala common yes Bala common and i think um well certainly david who does ask them covers this site and there's uh, as a, a Probably one of the most active teams, I'd probably say, within the uh, YT sites. Uh, so then it's, a, it's an old, it's called Barlow Common. Well, it's not actually a registered common anymore. It, it was back in the 1900s. And then a railway company bought the site and uh, used it to dump railway ballast on. So it's very much a brownfield site. But I mean, brownfield sites are some of my favourite sites. I mean, my favourite all-time site in the Trust is Thought Marsh. I don't think Mix here. But Barlow is another one basically it gives you hope that as an ex-industrial site, if you visit Barlow Common, it's, you know, it's, it's a spectacular site botanically and, um, you know, birds, green woodpeckers con, but also, you know, from a butterfly uh, point of view. So it's, it's a cracking site uh, just off, not, not too far from A19, just to the uh, north, northeast of near Selby. Um, been covered since, I think, roughly 2016 as well. So similar to Ascom Bog. Um, and like I said, there's, I think, a team of six or seven uh, volunteers cover it. Uh, and they did a, a sort of whopping, I think it's 22 hours worth of surveys um, covering sort of 16 dates last year. So again, it's sort of, um, despite the initial uh, lockdown and moratorium on uh, surveying, it managed to get well covered. Um, as I say, it's sort of uh, data-wise, yeah, it's interesting to see some of the uh, declines, like small copper and stuff. I, mean, I don't know if any of the uh, surveyors present want to comment on what uh, so they, they've noticed locally. Jill Clark is here. Do you want to comment? Yes, several of us do have a rotor to go around. Um, definitely, I didn't see nearly as many butterflies last year as the year before. But as you've been saying, 2019 was exceptional. Um, and yeah, it's, um, I mean, most of us that survey are also there doing conservation work every fortnight. So we do sort of open up areas to increase butterflies and such like. So it's, it's, it's good from that way that we can, uh, yeah, do the conservation work and then go and see what effect it has on the butterflies. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you, John. Would you say it's a dry site, Jill? Yes. Mm, that's interesting. We had the contrast of the gatekeepers and the skippers going up in uh, in Ascombe uh, Bog, which by its very name suggests it's wet. Uh, but on a dry site, um, you can see the gatekeepers and the ringlets uh, and the small coppers yeah. uh, are, are well down. To me, it, it, it seems to add up to, to a big weather factor on, on this year's results. Uh, and drought being one of the key ones. Yeah. I mean, okay. although it's it's dry, there are um, when the there's wet bits, is there? Yes, 
because they put clay over the old tipping site. So it, you soon get a, a layer of clay. So winter tends to be quite wet, but yeah, it does dry out quickly in the summer. Okay, shall we move on now to Bishop Wood, which is, uh, is guess what, me again. Um, don't worry, I'll shut up soon. Uh, Bishop Wood. So this is the largest area of forest in the Humberhead. So that's the big flooded lake that uh, uh, um, from prehistoric times. Um, and uh, it's still a very wet woodland. Uh, Selby Dam, which drains uh, from it, um, is, is known for its flooding. It doesn't flood in the wood. But uh, all the dikes are in it, in in the wood are full most most of the winter. It's used. It's been rewetted in in recent years, um, but it's also been extensively restored by the Forestry Commission. And each year, you'll see them chipping away at uh, clearing around uh, the larger oaks to give them space. Obviously, you don't want to clear a huge huge area around a uh, a tree because uh, they have a tendency to fall over. So they, they tend to nibble around the older oaks, the valuable trees, to give them some space to grow, uh, take out the superfluous sycamores and what have you, uh, and the big banks of conifers. Around about half the wood it is conifers, still is. As they're harvested, then they are not being replaced. So they're trying to uh, reshape it. Uh, and it certainly uh, has, it, it's, it's noticeable for, uh, for butterflies, the um, silver wash fritillary is one of the main sites, if not now the, the main site for silver wash fritillary. And I was the twerp who, who, who found it there. Uh, it was the shock of my life. And certainly uh, there wouldn't be a transect there now if I hadn't probably had that moment one day at the end of end of last few days of June, uh, watching all the commas which were just beginning to appear, but this huge monster flew past me and I wondered what the heck was that giant golden insect? And it landed just a few feet in front of me. And it's like one of those life-changing moments, something you never expect to see in your lifetime. And there it was. So I thought, well, it's a one-off, okay, you know, maybe it's a release. But then the following week, there were dozens of them. And uh, they've been there ever since, I'm glad to report. Uh, it's a really interesting site. We've got a red list argent and sable moth, uh, which had a cracking year in 2019, not so good in 2020. Uh, we saw two or three, but that was about it. We saw dozens in 2019. So it definitely has a uh, 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 big ups and downs in its population. You probably notice here that the northern main line of the railway, when it was diverted from the other side of Selby to, to straighten it, um, it was built just to the edge of, uh, of Bishop Wood. It cut through just the edge here. So there's a large area here where the trees are and uh, uh, scrub is kept under control. And 2019, uh, 2019 the end of 2018, it was cleared. And 2020, the second year, it was absolutely full of uh, things like uh, teasel, uh, fleabane, uh, uh, marsh valerian, uh, violets, you name it, primroses. Uh, it was absolutely full. And most of the silver wash fritillaries, instead of being scattered all around the forest, all came down here and so do the peacocks uh had my highest count of peacocks ever just in this little section here it's about a quarter of a mile or so walk along the railway line and i think I got, my maximum count in that that quarter mile was 250 butterflies um amazing and uh in terms of the year you'll see lots of greens I think because of that, that, that flowering strip really boosted numbers. It just acted like a magnet for miles around. And whatever we think we're doing with recording butterflies, 
at the end of the day, they're interested in food. They're interested in nectar. And if there's plenty of nectar, they will come in, in large numbers. And although the numbers were 17% up, you'll see even in a wet wood like Bishop Wood, ringlets were down. And so was Gatekeeper. Uh, and so was Small Skippers. So there seems to be a bit of a pattern here. Tortoise shells, extremely good year, as in many other transects. I'll finish there and move on to uh, Bolton Percy Station. Yes. I think Richard's raised his hand. Richard has raised his hand, so I'll, I'll move to Richard. Just a second. Richard. Good evening. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. It's just the interesting point you're bringing up about the rail side. I'm not sure if everybody's aware, but Network Rail are currently undertaking an environmental evaluation of their entire network with a view to improving the biodiversity. Um, as part of that process, they have to uh, co-join with the naturalist trusts in various areas, uh, one of which is the Yorkshire Wildlife Trust. Um, I'm a trustee of the Wensleydale Railway, and we will be working with Network Rail on this as a pilot project. And it's very interesting what you were saying there about the increase in butterflies due to the rail management. That's one of the things that we are going to be pushing. I just thought I'd mention that in passing, Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Richard. Yes, uh, I, my favorite part of the wood is, is the railway line, uh, both sides. So there's, a, there's another side to it, which is completely different, which is uh, on the Western side of the railway line, which is absolutely right up into the railway ballast, is absolutely covered in primroses, uh, agrimony um, and violets. <laughs> which is amazing, really. Um, obviously, the, the seed is there from, from the wood, um, and they've just taken advantage of the, uh, of, of, I think they managed to grow because it was, it was a wet, wet autumn, and everything germinated, and there's just violets absolutely everywhere. Okay, let's move on to Bolton Percy. Uh, conscious of time, so I'll... Uh keep it quick, although not yeah. Sam Watson's here, and this is, uh, I think it's a uh, site he covers. It's a, it's a, a, speaking of railway lines, it's obviously an old railway sidings, um, which actually very recently was requisitioned by Network Rail uh, when they were doing some bridge replacement works and had um, various things started on it again. Um, but it's, essentially it's managed for its scrub and grassland, uh, so it's within the magnesium limestone uh, belt. It's a, a quite... A, a rich grassland um, when it can be managed. And it's also within a sea of intensive arable um, and just sort of south of the 64 south of York. So it's quite an important site, albeit small, but it's an otherwise in a, a sort of a sea of intensive agriculture. Um, it's been, it's got quite a long time series of data as well. So I mean, we've got records of it being covered and surveyed since 2011. And it possibly might go um, before that even. So it's it's one of those valuable sites because the longer the time series you've got, the, the more uh, information it can provide. And as you can see, that um, yeah, interesting common blues, one of the only uh, uh, biggest losers on on site. I mean, I don't know if Sam wants to come in and say anything or. But um, I said no worries if not. Yeah, there's, uh, there is quite a lot of buddleia on the site as well, which uh, attracts a lot of the butterflies. So, and that seems to be spreading a bit now, but uh, it is right next to the railway. So you do, uh, you know, hopefully there'll be more species coming in as, as at the uh, Hags Wood one, the, at Bishop's Wood. Um, we've, uh, it is a very small site. So, you know, and we've got quite a few people who do uh, come to survey it and if there's any more wanting to do it this the space uh, there is potential um, I actually live at Bishop Top I could possibly move to a different one say um, ask and bog if required and somebody else could do that one possibly but it is a nice site to look at it's uh, uh, a nice one to, to do 
for a change for people. Uh, it's nice to swap around, I think, possibly in new different sites. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. Do you want to do Burton Leonard? Yeah, I thought the next one, yes. Yes, so Burton Leonard, um, yes, another um, post industrial site. I mean, it seems to be going on a theme here. Um, so it's an old uh, lime, so I mean, the lime kilns uh, are still there on site. But again, it's another, it's a limestone quarry site. So again, another rich uh, botanical site because it's got the sort of limestone grassland as well as some uh, sort of more mature woodland and uh, scrub. So obviously, it's positioned sort of it's ideal really for butterflies to bask um, in the sun. Uh, it's been covered since uh, well, I, I went far back looking at the data, and it goes 2010 and beyond and before. There's a slight break or question mark in 2014. Um, that it's covered, but yeah, another site with a, a long sort of history. Um, I don't know if Kerry's here, one of the sites, she is, in it. I think. Kerry, it didn't, it didn't appear to have a very good year. Um, yes, hello. Um, yes, I, th I think actually, probably with the lockdown, quite a few more village people, um, the children were using the um, as a playground, actually. Right. Um, you know, so whatever, but um. Uh, it's difficult to recall. Uh, I, I would I haven't seen the the dingy the dingy skipper there. I would love to, and and perhaps what I would also like to do is to go and visit a reserve where there um, I could be sure to see dingy skippers because um, I think they're fast flyers. Yes, yeah. And, <laughs> and I, I've not committed myself to to seeing one, but Ruth is also here, and she's started to help with the surveys too. Which and she lives a little closer than I do, and has a neighbour who's quite an expert, um, uh, but not on your list. And he visits sometimes, and I think he probably has spotted the dingy skipper. Okay. Um, so. Uh, I would love more diversification of butterflies there. I don't see a great range. I went for the first, I went to have a look first time uh, this last summer. And I, the first thing that struck me was the amount of elm trees, large numbers of elm trees. And I noticed you do see white letter hair streaks on occasion. Have you seen them at all yourself? Uh, yeah, I take the binoculars um, and hope, but to, now, this see, one of those elm trees has died. Mm. Mm. Yeah, there's... Yes, that remaining one where they were seen has, has gone now, more is dead now, by last summer. But do you find they regrow? I, I noticed in, in Bishopwood, um, we have quite a high turnover of elm trees. So that they'll grow for five or ten years, then die back. And then from the, the old coppice stump, they regrow again. The marble white, I'm curious, because where was I? Um, there's a different reserve um, on the limestone, covered in marble whites. I think, oh, <laughs> quite specific, aren't they, for their locations? Yes. Yeah, marble white is a really fascinating butterfly. Um, it will own only, only, the females will only drop eggs if they smell a certain fungus. <laughs> Um, this is some work done by Miriam Rothschild, famous Rothschild family. And um, because it's the ergot fungus, and it's the ergot fungus that makes the toxin, which is the warning colours of the black and white checkerboard of the marble white, is a warning colour that I am poisonous. And I'm poisonous because I've eaten ergot. Right, moving on. Shall we move on to Cully Heath? Yep, it's so another um, first site uh, just to the west of Pocklington. Interesting because it's called Cali in short for California because it's um, likened, uh, well, the history says that they had it as a, a grazing site for the poor and they likened the stampede of people rushing to graze their stock on the site to the Californian gold rush. So you'll notice signs around this area, there's California fields and, and the like. So it's the Cali is short for California, but uh, like I said, it's a heathland site right um, along the 1079. It's under threat of a widening road widening scheme, which um, has never gone ahead. It's uh, relatively small, but uh, again, another 
larger grassland site. There's some sort of scrub and woodland interest as well. Um, and I think it's uh, Jen Stopford does the, oh, somebody's saying they lost the sound. Is it just Ian that can't hear? Can everyone hear me? I can hear you fine. All right, yeah. Um, yeah, so it's a, it's a site not too far from York, I said, uh, near Pockington. And you can see yeah, on that, that map, it's got, um, goes through a range of uh, grass and types. And it's been covered since, um, actually it's quite a recent site, only the last couple of years that we've Tish. got data for. So it's a new site, but it's a, it's a, it's a good site to have because um, of its location. It has marble white and dingy skippers. Yeah, so it's a it's a young site, but uh, it'd be a good one to um, is, keep is, going. Is Jen with us? Anybody know if Jen is with us? Jen Stopford. And if you are, would you like to speak? I don't think she is. Okay. No. Yeah. Ella Brim Banks and uh, Philip. Yes. Keep going. I've seen Graham and, and, and Ian's here, although maybe that's why he had a, a strategically timed, my sound's not working. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, Elleburn Bank, it's leased from the Forest Commission. Um, and again, it's another, you know, botanically rich, diverse site. Um, I mean, somebody, whether Graham wants to say anything about it, because he knows far more uh, than me about it. It's been uh, covered uh, back from 2011. Um, and it's got the... the yeah, dedicated team of Oliver, uh, Graham, Ian, and Paul. And I think it did. There's a, I know there's a new transact, so I think there's an old one. Um, so I'm not sure if my tears going back to 2011 is covering the old transact as well as the new one. Yeah, there's a there's a much older one. Um, it goes back way beyond the millennium, I think. Um, we right. set up a new one, Jen Hayward and myself, and we didn't know what the route of the old one was. Uh, I've subsequently found out it's very, very similar. So you uh, it, it <laughs> stitch the two data sets together if anyone had the time to play with it. Uh, so it's, a, it's a small site, although there is the, the Pexton Banks um, gets lumped in with it sometimes, um, which is separate and it's not part of our uh, tenure. Um, but it's just up uh, north of like Thornton and Ladale, um, so sort of foothills of the North Yarbrough's. Yeah, I mean, the... Graham? I thought I'd unmute himself. Uh, the key thing about Ellaburn in terms of site description is the western edge is an ancient earthwork uh, that ends the bank, which continues into, so that's this bit here. Series five. And um, Pexton is the continuation northwards of that bank. Yeah. Uh, and, but we'll talk about Pexton later. The, by far and above the best section here are S5 and S6 round to S7. And I think that's possibly because less people can be bothered to walk down that way. Most visitors are there for flowers, um, is it, is a it's never never farmed, I don't believe, um, and you do. It does get a lot of visitors. I even disturbed a, a wild camper there last last year during uh, the, the summer. Uh, there were lots of families picnicking on there last year, which I'd never seen before. Uh, so coming back to what previous comments have been, um, I guess people were looking for different places to go locally. Yeah. And find it out. Yeah. Um, Ian, did you want to mention uh, the Brown Argus? I think Ian's just put in chat that he's uh, loss of count, a sound, so he can't contribute. I, I know that Ian saw a number of Brown Argus, what we thought was late in the season, and my last record of a Brown Argus was on that section six, and it was on 31st of uh, August. Wow. So, yeah, and here, yeah, that's yeah. a that's a favourite corner, isn't it? There, yeah, it's an interesting one because it gets overgrown a bit by trees, just where you've got your cursor now. Yeah, the, the farmer in the field there 
a couple of years ago, just rode roughshod right over that corner and just chopped everything down. So I believe so that the pheasants could get through because there's always stacks of pheasants on here. Uh, and where S3 is marked, the gorse round there, Philip, is now making the current transit untenable because it's grown okay. over the actual walkway. And in, in previous times, I I know a couple of us have taken uh, just clippers and just clipped it back, but I didn't do that this year. Good point. Mm. I'll, I'll flag it with the um, reserve okay. officers. It's not, it's not a real drama. We could do it again this year. It's, but it does need doing. Thank you, Graham, for your contribution. That was really useful. I'm moving on now to uh, the Forest of Flowers. So this is a brand new transect, quite a large transect, as you can see. It's it's a it's a farm. Uh, the owner of the farm is with us tonight, Alwyn. And uh, I'll just give a quick quick rundown. I haven't done a description yet. I haven't had time to write this one up fully. Um, but it, it's 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 a farm which it, it, on grade three land uh, it was not making any money, and so it's been deep ploughed. So a one meter deep plough inversion ploughed. So the subsoil basically became the topsoil, and then it was basically resown with meadow mix and then planted with trees. So it's somewhat similar to uh, Three Hags Wood Meadow. Um, but I'm pleased to say uh, the variety of plants is, is really quite outstanding. And uh, it's got the largest counts of all. I think it got nearly 3,000 individual butterflies were recorded on this uh, transect this last year. But we didn't start it till I think the end of June when we actually started recording. So that, that's quite a remarkable achievement. Uh, Arwen's seen um, uh, White Letter Hair Street, which is good. Um, and I think he's seen Marble White, um, which is interesting. Um, I think it's a great, a great project for the future. It shows what can be done and how nature can recover, given a little bit of help. Uh, the inversion ploughing is an interesting technique um, because you're bringing up that sand and from, from far below. But the surrounding hedges here have lots of ancient oaks in. Um, so there's a good variety. And things like uh, Vipers bugleus has really taken off in, in, in some areas like this area here. It's really, really taken on. Bird's foot trefoil over here is full of uh, brunette moths, um, blue butterflies, uh, and uh, other um, things like yellow shell, uh, day flying moth, um, a really interesting sight. Uh, Arwin, would you like to say anything? Hello? Uh, yeah, I think you've uh, just about covered it there. Yeah, it was a, a mixed farm up until 2015. And then from then on, it's been um, deep ploughed and planted with new woodland. Um, it's also got a few areas of older grassland, and um, we get a lot of meadow browns, ringlets, um, yes. gate gatekeepers, um, and um, well, I've, got, I've, I've got your accounts on the screen at the moment. And uh, I, a correction, we got nearly 3,000 um, individuals recorded, including 900 meta brands, um, being the, the the highlight. Right, thank you, Arwin. Shall we move on to Grasswood? Yeah, I think I think uh, Miss is in in Blomfold. I think I've seen I think Barbara's name. Oh, Barbara's um, in. Yeah, okay. so it's a it's a, one of the largest stands of broadleaf woodland, I believe, in the Dales. Well, between Grasswood and Bastow Wood, which is just um, to the north section. So, I mean, the, the, the bit yeah. of our Grasswood is around 80 hectares. You've got Bastow Wood to the north and then to the south is a small tract of woodland, trust woodland as well. So, collectively, it's quite a substantial uh, block of broadleaf. The downside is it's it's heavily um, 
populated with ash trees, which are quite le- badly affected by the ash dieback. So it's it's over the coming years, there's going to be potentially quite a bit of um, inadvertent opening up of uh, sort of woodland rides and glades, which from a, a butterfly point of view may be interesting. And th- it'll prove why this data is so valuable, because as that change happens, um, you know, there's a woodland potentially, you know, there's big areas die out and uh, areas open up. It would be interesting to see uh, how that's reflected in the butterfly numbers. It's also uh, expected for the northern brown argus, which I think is more on the Basto wood side, actually, rather than the grass wood side. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a yeah, fantastic site, very large site. And there's only Ian and Barbara uh, cover it. There's um, a chap who does Kipling Courts, uh, John Buttrick. He sometimes covers it when he goes up for his holiday. Um, so you might do one visit, but generally it's all uh, Ian and Barbara. I don't know if Barbara wants to say anything or about the site. But hello, did... Ian, Ian here. I'll, uh, uh, I'll say a bit. Um, yeah, so I mean, you know, as you said, there's been a lot of uh, felling um, of ash trees along quite a lot of the site, which, which has really opened it up very considerably. Um, I think the thing that was, I mean, it's only our second year of doing this site, but I think, I think the thing that was really striking this year is actually... Um, there were quite a few brown argus and uh, northern brown argus, and they were really quite widely distributed um, across the grassy bits of the site altogether. So I think that's looking pretty encouraging, actually. So it looks like they might be, you know, uh, on, on the up there. I think the second thing to say, along with the general trend that people um, have been saying, is there's a there's a lower area of grass um, near in the final section of the transect. And uh, we recorded, in contrast to the year before, we, we recorded very few butterflies there this year. So the, you know, the grassland butterflies down there seem to be very, very depleted. So that's, that's really what uh, I think we'd like to add. So the village I know was interested in um, looking after its own villages and converting them, um, you know, with a no-mo policy. And uh, Fiona wanted to monitor the uh, increasing diversity as this project took shape. And uh, anything you want to say, Fiona? Uh, yes, hello. Um, well, can you hear me all right? Yes. It's... it's um... It's in its infancy, really, because we've only been monitoring for two years. Last year was rather disappointing. And I wondered if some of it was due to the the really miserable weather in June. But um, and there was certainly a very much a drought in in May. Um, I don't know that there's much to report as yet, but hopefully, yes, as you say, as we keep mowing the verges, because we have these big wide verges, we're hoping that the finer grasses will grow and more flowers. And we also had, we were quite lucky because Yorkshire Water had to dig up quite a lot of bits on uh, one side of the road. And they very kindly um, put some wildflower seed down, which they got, we got, uh, we ordered the Boston heavy clay um, seed that matches what we've got already. So we got flower ex- so Hopefully, we'll have some extra flowers uh, of the ones that we've got already, and some that we quite like the idea of having, like more birds, but trefoil things like that. We've got a lot of knapweed along there. It's partly next to pasture. You know, behind the hedges, there'll be pasture some of the way, and a really arable. It is quite an arable desert, really. The area around mm. East Potting with, um, mm. apart from Weldrake Kings, obviously, and, and the Derwin Kings. So we just you. Thinking, Thank you, Fiona. Do makes a difference, thanks. Let's move on, Leyburn. Yes, so it's, um, I think we've owned it since 1983, it's one of the uh, sort of church pastures. So it's never been ploughed or reseeded, so it's a, still manages a traditional hay meadow, so it's a really uh, botanically rich site. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, I think we'll just check if they're here. Is Jenny, oh yeah, there's Jack and see yes. Jenny's, Jenny's here. Yes. Um, Hi, yes. Um, we were fortunate this year, I only missed two weeks in the counting as it's actually within my walking distance during the lockdown. So that was good. Mm. Um, yeah, as you can see, 
there was the painted lady was the only one that was really down. I was delighted to find um, dark green fritillary. Um, yeah, meadow browns, ringlets were very disappointing. Meadow browns were doing well. Uh, we have a transect by the river, which isn't cut. And we get, obviously once the hay is cut on the meadow, um, everything just goes, but we have a very useful transect by the river, which keeps us very entertained and records quite a lot throughout. We've got good devil's bit scabious, which is a nice late, late summer. So that's, that's section eight, is it, Jenny? Yes, it is. Okay, which has a very large number of uh, butterflies, I noticed. Yes, it's very useful. <laughs> okay, thank you. thank you. So moving on, um, uh, low ox pasture. Um, Philip? Uh, it's not one of ours. I think it's oh, Paul. It's Paul. It's mine. Yeah. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, low ox pasture is um, upland, limestone, pavement and crags, and it's a, a, a very fine, uh, high quality uh, calcareous grassland. Um, being 300 metres above sea level, you have to, have to be um, very careful choosing on your days you go, um, but when it's good, it's very, very good. Um, it's part of the... Um, big complex of northern brown argus that we have in Upper Wharfdale and uh, can sometimes put out some very, very high numbers. Uh, last year was fairly average. I've been walking it for six years uh, with, with assistance from various people. Um, it's uh, also got good numbers of dark green fritillary later in the year. Um, uh, and uh, it's very good for its moths. It's got a, a good colony of least minor, which is which is um, uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, very uh, uh, restricted in the UK. Uh, also got uh, uh, a micro moth called Cythris phallicella, which has, is very restricted to just just this part of, of England. Um, there's the thyme plume is present, and there's huge numbers at times of Sister Sorester. Um, I've counted over a hundred on a transect before now. Gosh, it is a cracking transect, isn't it? It's unfortunately it's private land, and uh, it, it, it's uh, so there's no public access. But it, it, you, you'll all know where it is when you drive up Wharfdale. Um, it's on top of Kinsey Crag. Thank you. Shall we move on to Paxton? And Philip again. No, me, uh, because it's Forestry Commission. Um, can't, so, it be, can't it be me, because it's my tra transect? You carry on. <laughs> uh, well, and, and also Dave Wainwright knows uh, a lot about this one, because there's an active uh, collaboration between the forestry, as you know, Nick. Yes. Because they cleared a number of trees from their... Uh, probably about five years ago now, and it's been actively managed to reintroduce the Duke of Burgundy. Um, basically, it's a straight line walk on and off the bank, the previous bank that I mentioned in terms of an earthwork. So you walk along a footpath, look at the bank, then you dip into the, uh, the undergrowth. Um, the forestry are doing a great job of, of, of clearing the transect in around about August because it does get overgrown. And interestingly, and Dave will probably uh, add a bit to this, hopefully, the planned introduction hasn't happened, but Dave, two years ago, spotted a couple of Duke of Burgundies, and I believe spotted one or two last year as well, although we've not recorded them yet on transit. It's, it's, um, it's an improving site. Uh, dark green fertility is probably the real highlight there, to be honest. Okay. You're generally down in numbers this year, I, we, we see. There was a lot of dog walking uh, down that track. Yeah. Uh, not that that, some of them were off the lead, but also um, it, it's, both that and Elburn can be exposed to high winds sometime, depending on the direction. So it's, um, it's not, it's, it, Pexton, at the moment, usually feels disappointing, shall we say. Mm, okay, thank you. So, Ripon Wetlands. 
Yes, one of the um, newest uh, Yorkshire Wild Trust sites, um, born up a sand and gravel uh, extraction site next to Ripon uh, Racecourse, um, so south side of Ripon. Uh, so it's, yeah, I think one of the newest sites as well in terms of surveys, I think started in 2019. Um, so it'll make it invaluable really, because having the baseline of data right from the inception of when the, the site's been created and as the you know, newly created habitats mature, it'd be really good to see you know, all the changes that occur uh, with the data going forward. I think I've seen, uh, I think Liz and Liz Jenny uh, here who cover the site. I don't think Jeff is, I've looked down and seen. Um, I've seen Jeff. So much. Not sure if um, Jennifer, if Jennifer want to have a want to say anything or Liz? Right. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, it was actually we didn't do a lot of monitoring this um, last year due to, um, I don't know whether it was a hen harrier or something was nesting uh, yeah. or potentially nesting in part of the site. So nobody, and especially as this was off the public walk, um, we weren't allowed to go through. So we only had very few weeks really. It's like um, uh, August and September. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, we, we, we missed the, the, the most parts. Um, unfortunately, I was just having a quick look at, um, let's have a look what we got, a uh, small skip. Yeah, we, we got quite a few whites. Yeah. And, um, and the gatekeepers are, are there again. This time they'd actually been on two sections of the transept. So they'd, they'd obviously moved from one side of the lake to the other. Um, Good. But no, I mean, it, it's been a big improvement. I mean, I did it in 2019 when it first started. And I mean, it's amazing the vegetation that's as that, that, that has grown up. And also off the record, while I was there, there were some clouded yellows, but they weren't off. They were, oh. they were yeah, they weren't. Um, I put a note on because there was about three or four men there all getting very excited they come goodness knows from the other side of the country to see these clouded yellows and this was last year that was last year yes it was Gosh, sort of uh, late late um but I, I just noted on my on the transept right at the end but they weren't actually on they weren't i know i sort of had to do a bit of That's a diversion interesting. To see them. i noticed today the first one's been seen in the south of, south of the country um actually overwintered in, in southern southern uk yeah. So maybe given a few more years, they may, they may appear. Shall we move on? Uh, yeah. Shadwell, this is me. So uh, this is one I don't know much about, but I know Nira, it, Nira is here with us. Uh, whether she'd like to just tell us a little bit about uh, her transect. Are you there? Hi, yeah, I'm here. Um, it's it's just something local that I knew I'd be able to get to on a regular basis. So it's just walking through a bit of farmland and and that kind of shows in the results, really. There's oh, not always a lot of stuff there. And um, the highlight really was the white letter hair street because there is witch helm about in some of the woodlands. Okay. But I haven't seen that for a few years. But yeah, no, it's um, interesting to do, but not in incredibly interesting. <laughs> So you're right. You're right at the edge of Roundhay Park. And That's right. Yes, it's just somewhere I could walk to, and I, I just knew I wouldn't be able to do it if it was much further away. So I've done it. It's Indeed. close to me. And yeah. those 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 elms are on the side of the brook. That's right. Yes. Yeah. 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 And there is one. there's section one. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's the place I've seen them, although not the last couple of years yeah okay. and, and last year was a washout as well didn't see very much at all so i've got a I've got a lady just the other side around hay who's interested in having a transect um so that would be interesting to join up her figures with your figures okay okay moving on this is stavely next which is split um into two separate transacts because the site has grown. Um, so originally the Stavely East, which is the first, I think, one in the list, 
um, is the original reserve. Um, and then we took on the second half uh, back in, I think it was 20, can't remember actually, 2013, 2012. Um, so you'll see that there's a two wetland mosaics. But yeah, so Stavely is covered by, I think, a Joanna, I think I did see her name. Yes, oh, yes, yeah. I'm here. Can yeah, you hear Joanna. Me? Yes. yes. I, I do actually West Stavely. I used to do the East. Um, last year, I found it very disappointing. I didn't see very much, really. Um, can I just say that the cloudy yellow, I did see that on the um, Ripon wetlands um, two years ago when it when I was first there, when it really was very new. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, um, 2019. Not, yeah, not that that was my my bit at all. Um, <laughs> yes, it's a very varied little route, very pretty. Um, but I have to say, I can't really make much comment on numbers. Sorry. That's okay. That's fine. Nice to meet you. Um, um, can I just can I just make one point? Um, I've joined the iRecord app, but but I can't make head or tail of it. <laughs> I, I, it, it it doesn't seem to give me the sort of spreadsheet bit. I don't know why. Spreadsheet bit. Well, you know, in in order that I have got a form to fill in, in order that right. I just don't just don't know how to use it. Okay, well, that's an interesting question. Um, so don't worry that... now. Don't worry. You you you've got you've got lots of things to do. We'll we'll, we'll pass on that one. See if there's any time at the end. Um, <laughs> And move on to uh, if that's covered Stavely East and West. Should we move on to Strensel? Yeah. Mm. Um, we have lots. I think we have lots of. Well, we did have lots of people from Strensel, uh, including Terry Crawford. Um, Terry, are you there? Would you like to just give us a very quick rundown? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. I can hear you. Uh, are you aware that none of the transect is on YWT land? So you're still happy to hear about it? Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, OK. Well, um, it's, it's a bit of a difficult site because the well, all of the area where the transect is, is a military training area. Um, part of it, some of the best butterfly areas, you actually can't get onto except on Fridays, where, which are range maintenance days. So we wanted to have a transect that included some of the open heathland on Strensel Common, uh, to, for, for example, Small Heath, um, uh, Green Hair Streak. But we particularly wanted to go through the eastern end. So this is sections one and two are open heathland on Strensel Common, often quite blowy. When you go into section three, you're entering World's End and section four, and section five of all world's end. And that is actually owned by the church commissioners on long-term lease to the forestry commission. And around about 2002, 2003, the area was clear felled um, in the hope that, um, oh dear, that uh, memory, the bird that flies around at night, nightjar, that's it, yes. um, would uh, start nesting there. Um, They've been around, but they haven't really settled down in the area. Um, what has happened is that the silver birch scrub in particular started taking a hold, also young Scots pine trees. So we decided um, about three years ago that if something wasn't done about it, it would return to woodland. So um, several groups came together that winter and did an awful lot of scrub clearance. Um, then just going around the other, trans the other sections, section six is back onto Strensel Common, the, the, uh, owned by the military, very, very damp along there. Section seven is back on Heathland, open, fairly open Heathland. Section eight is uh, again, Heathland, but more overshadowed by trees, and then nine is open Heathland again. So it's it's quite a mixed transect, and we particularly wanted to include World's End um, because when Strensel Common is 
which is the triple SI in a special area of conservation, so it's a very important site. Um, when the triple SI is up for re-notification, well, it was up for re-notification years ago, but natural England have a sort of manpower shortage, a person power shortage, don't they? So who knows when it's going to happen? Um, but it, there's a, a suggestion that it would be nice to actually extend the triple, triple SI out through World's End and further on to the east mm. towards the Sandburn Hotel uh, and golf course. One possible reason for that is to try to extend the Heathland because there is a very rare moth, the dark border of beauty. And the only place in England where it occurs is Strensel Common and it's having a very, very bad time at the moment. Um, so, um, so, so that's uh, one reason why it would be good to increase the triple SI. Now, on in within the world's end, uh, we have a, a number of uh, butterflies which are quite interesting. We have green hair streak. We have small heath, uh, both large and small skippers. Um, marbled right has been there for a long time, but has actually declined recently. There's gatekeeper, good population of gatekeeper, and setting aside what we've heard tonight about the forest of flowers, um, I think that the world's end population of gatekeeper is very much at the northern edge of the northwards expansion we had about 20, 30 years ago of gatekeeper. And the land starts going upwards onto the Howardian Hills, and it seems to stop the gatekeeper in any numbers from spreading further north. So it's an important site for that reason. Um, Dingy Skipper and Brown Argus have been seen, Dingy Skippy, for, for the first time last year. So there's really quite a mix of rather interesting butterflies on the site. And in 2019, I did a comparison of all the well recorded transects in Yorkshire, and the Strensel Common transect had more species than any other Yorkshire transect. It's a bit of a worry in a way because um, the scrub is coming back again in World's End. Bracken is spreading like crazy. Um, and the little patch of Heathland, which is where the marbled rights um, focus was, is perhaps under threat from bracken spread. So there's a, a, some various issues there, but it's not got any nature conservation st status at the moment in World's End. Um, so something, something the branch could do something about, maybe, uh, Terry. Um, yeah, possibly. Yes. Good. I mean, That's, I think it it needs the it needs scrub management, and it also needs a lot of bracken removal. One problem is that, um, and I know Richard Baker's present here, and he, he's very concerned about this. Uh, when the 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 sheep are put in in the summer, the land that's available to them is not large. And it tends to be along the main track where you get bird's foot trefoil, and that's where the common blues are, and one or two of the day flying moths. And the grazing by the sheep, it can be pretty intense be mm. because of the lack of land that's available to them because of the bracken that's you mm. know, spreading everywhere. So I don't know, nobody's really in charge of it from a conservation point of view. So there isn't any sort of strategy at all. Mm. How to control sheep. <laughs> okay, should we move on? Thank you very much, Terry. That was a fascinating insight to a really interesting transect. Weldrake. Uh, yes, it's a, another Yorkshire Whitefist one. Um, Fiona Bruce, which I think she's already spoke here. So it's a, it's a huge um, floodplain meadows, grassland that seasonally floods. It's only just recently um, come out from underneath the water. Uh, went there the other day, so it's a huge uh, site. Um, I don't know if Fiona wants to say anything about it. Um, hello. Well, it's it's managed mostly for birds. Um, we see about fourteen different species of butterfly. It was, um, I mean, it's a very interesting walk alongside the river and then out in right out into the wetland area. Um, but the site is mostly managed for birds and occasionally we wonder if there'd be a one, you know, something that could be done to improve it for butterflies. But when you're walking along a ride with the river on your right, on the left hand side, there's a lot of tall vegetation. But 
not much in the way of flowers and mm. um you know you do see all the whites and you, you do well you see all the normal butterflies i suppose that you would normally expect to see plus you see speckled woods um it would be interesting if they were to do some cutting down of the vegetation possibly to um just make it easier for the butterflies flying about and perhaps mm. get more flowers instead of the sort of tangle of vegetation but um that's all I know that I can say about it, really, mm. because I think it's managed for birds. But actually, the, the person who manages it, Brian, I think, mm. and I think it's Brian, yeah. he's on our WhatsApp group, and he's very interested in what we're doing as a group for butterfly manage, you know, butterfly monitoring. Yeah, so it, it's managed as part of the uh, Derwent National Nature Reserve, so Natural England, just at Bank Island to the north. And um, I guess historically there's always been more for birds it's a SAC and SPA um Brian's interested with the floodplain meadows and more botanical side um interestingly Natural England have started clearing some of the trees along the sort of sections one and two of that transect um, I was there last week and they've taken out some quite large trees um towards the top end so that that top ends well a bit further down actually is it section two oh, so on section three on the section three transect and a bit of the end of section two so they've taken out some of the small coppices there. Well, the coppices, taken whole trees out. So it's definitely opened up on that section. Mm, interesting. Should we move on to um, Catherine at uh, Wycliffe Scar up in Swaledale? Yeah, near Richmond. Well, I think I'm quite lucky. It's his most beautiful transect because sections one, two and three are on a cliff, really, inland cliff. And they look over the, of the whole of Swaledale and the river, really gorgeous. Um, there's not much on section one. Section two, three and four, are mainly peacocks, uh, speckled woods, etc. But the most interesting section, if you go right round, is section eight there and right back to section, the beginning again, section one. That's a whole strip of roadside with small, cop, uh, small skippers. And you can see literally hundreds and hundreds of small skippers at the right week of the year. It's really very pretty in, in grass. Uh, and the rest of it just just a mixture of species. I'm hoping to see some more at some point. It's quite a good range, actually, with dark green fertilities, northern brown argus, which I only see one or two of. But, you know, quite a good range of species altogether. OK. Thank you. Is Waldo, is Helen, Helen Simpson still with us? Yes, I'm here. Hi, Helen. Hi. Hi. Would you like to would you like to tell us a little bit about your a wonderful transect yeah. it sounds most interesting it's at Holmfirth isn't it it is yes um I'm within walking distance of my house it's the uh, first section is a was at one point a quarry I was just thinking I don't know yeah yeah hundreds of years ago and it's now very much a recreational site you get climbers is that there is literally a cliff yes yeah. it, the cliff yeah. and you get climbers on there so it's a footpath along it's all on footpaths yeah. um, that's probably the the most exciting bit um then it goes through farmland and through into the Waldale village so and the, yeah the, the bit which you commented on the other day where it does a sort of twist uh I go through some allotments and I when I originally did it I thought well you'd get uh maybe different species because of the allotment and the, the whites but that's where the wall are and I was quite surprised oh right because personally I hadn't seen any before so she said a bit of a wow what's this which section uh, is that which section is that again uh, section four three to four. Oh, there that's the allotment yeah, area yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm, that's yeah. interesting um I have seen them because it's all stone dry stone walls um, and quite high. So yes, I do uh, struggle to get out sometimes because of the, the wind <laughs> and the temperature. Um, so yeah, the, after Walldale, it then goes through woodland uh, and a section then coming up on the road, seven and eight is back through the <clears throat> so eight and to nine, or nine and across, nine to ten. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's called Cliff Wreck. It's a recreational 
ground, which is of oh, this bit here. Like, yeah. yeah, it's like Heathland. Yeah. Uh, first few years, very much dog walkers paradise. But this last year, which will be interesting, as somebody else mentioned, the increase in the public using the whole area. I think it'd be interesting if that's had an effect, sort of more dog walking, more people walking. Um, got very wet during the winter, so very muddy. So I, I, I don't know the effect that'll have on the, the number of species. Thank you very much. Thank you, Helen. That was an insight. I'm going to finish now with just, okay. just, just looking at our, um, and I'm going to be very brief about this. I know we're, we're well over our time. Um, and just, just look at uh, when, I, when I became Transect Walker, I needed to learn. Um, and I did a review of our formal recording effort, in other words, our transects. And this is a map that shows a, uh, a representation of where are the green, the green ticks are active transects. And you begin to see where they all are. So you see a big cluster here, um, Ingle, Ingleborough and Grassington. And a pause describes some of the wonderful sites there are uh, it uh, grasswood, etc. Um, and then we've got the Tabular Hills, and of course you've got Hornby and uh, many other sites in the Tabular Hills. Um, and then you've got some of the wetlands here, Richmond, um, and lots around York. Um, but there are large areas which I've marked in yellow, which are not well covered, or we now, now no longer have active transects, which are the orange crosses, which means they're recently uh, not been active or red, they haven't been active for some years. Um, so we, 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 ha we have a coverage issue. And when I looked, now Yorkshire is 9% of the, of the United Kingdom. And there are nearly 2,000 transects, um, which means if we're 9%, we should have something like 170 transects if we were um, maybe not quite such a big place. But of course, Yorkshire is absolutely huge. And the population level, particularly North Yorkshire, is very, very low. So maybe uh, that's an, an overestimate of what we should be doing but it did illustrate that we may be a little bit short on our transects. The other indicator is, is that uh, we mentioned about the records, 12,000 records from our transects, but 50,000 records in total, which means we got a he it's only a, a third of our uh, records are coming from transects. Now in most counties, it's three quarters of our records come from transects. So we're, we're quite low on our uh, transect numbers. So I was particularly interested to work out where, where should our transects actually be? And what should be the criteria if we were to improve our coverage? So I began to look at um, where, are, where these poor coverage areas are. And they're actually in priority landscapes for uh, uh, butterfly conservation. So you see here the wolds. And last year we had no transects. Um, Nidda, Nidderdale, again, very little. Upper Swaledale, uh, very little. Vale Mowbray, very little. Um, a very, very rich area like the Dern Valley complex and all its old industrial sites, almost nothing. But strangely, most of our members live in this area, but we have no transects. And similarly, the air and Calder Valleys, again, quite rich in, in butterfly sites, but not much. But the richest uh, area for butterflies in general, and it, you can see a little bit of it here around uh, Ripon and, and Burrowbridge, is the magnesium limestone strip, which is shown here, just, just basically it follows the A1 southwards. But we only have uh, um, only bit south of there is basically uh, uh, in the air where um, uh, Fairburn Ings is, and nothing further south. Now I've been down this area myself, and it is I can you can find all sorts, um, and we really need to focus in 
on this area. Um, so that was the conclusion. So I superimposed a, a map of good sites on top of this coverage and came out with a plan. So that's where we are to at the moment. And we've heard uh, a lot about them. The green ones are the active ones, is 45 presently. And this is the action plan that I came out with. So the world, as I mentioned, is a priority. And uh, hopefully we will have Kipling Coates back and we have a new volunteer for Fodden. But it's something we really need to concentrate on in the future is to have the world well rep represented. Magnesium limestone strip. Uh, this year, we'll be going to be able to do Brockadale, uh, a fantastic site, uh, one of the premier sites, your butterfly sites, and Sproke for, Sproke for Flash, we hope to be able to do this, this year. And I'll be very keen to find somebody to do uh, Tanklos Hills, uh, which is near Kipax, um, and Anstonstone Wood, and Maltby Low Common in the southern area, um, and restart some of the old, well-established transect with a long data record like Frickley Park. Uh, we want to do more in North Yorkshire Moors, and we definitely need to do more in the Durham Valley. Um, I'm going to close at that point, um, and I'm not going to cover the wider countryside scheme um, and go straight to questions. Catherine, would you like to take over from me? Yes, we haven't really got any particular questions apart from Joanna's very good question about iRecord, but perhaps somebody would agree to contact Joanna separately and have a chat with her. That'd be more useful, wouldn't it? It would indeed. Yeah. If anybody... I... I can um, cover that. Uh, yes, please, because I, I found the page, but I just don't understand it because it seems to have a whole list of things that aren't relevant. So uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a few options, but yeah, okay. no, I'll get to it separately. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just going through the questions. I think that's the only ones. Um, Andrew Sumnall, did you want? Did you want to say anything about your? Andrew's got his sound back now. So ah. would you like to say anything, Andrew? Is he there? Could I just say something? It's Joanna again. Yeah. Um, uh, do we have our um, sheet? Uh, we, I don't have any dates yet. Have I been missed out or? Um, no, no, I am, I'm, I'm due to send that out this week. I've been... That's all right. I'm, I'm certainly not pushing you, but thank you very much. Yeah, no, everything's been uh, delayed this, this year, um, particularly on the YDBT side, because I was waiting for my volunteering team to get the official word about whether or not we'd officially be allowing volunteering to take place. Um, oh. And there's been the Breeding Bird Survey stuff as well. So it's, it's, okay. it's been a very delayed start. I'm, I'm hoping for much better organisation next year. Um, so so do we possible. know if we can start? Yes, yes, so it is fine. Oh. Um, I'm oh. not allowed to proactively recruit new volunteers, but I am allowed to manage no. existing ones as long as they're okay. local. Um, okay, yeah. But yeah, so I'll be sending out this week, hopefully. Thank you. Would, would Dave Wainwright like to say anything? Uh, Dave, are you still there? I mean, I can figure out how to unmute. <laughs> um, no, not not particularly. It's been nice hearing from you. I was just typing out a message then, thanking you and uh, Phil for organising the, the meeting this year, and uh, and to Catherine for for sort of keeping things moving so smoothly. It's uh, been really good to catch up with anyone. If anyone's got, if anyone's got a question for me, feel free to fire it in. But uh, I'll do my best to answer it. But just generally, it's pleasing the number of people that are out there recording stuff. Yes, I think we've, that's all the questions we've got on the chat anyway. Andrew's lost his sound again, I think, so he says thank okay. you. Yeah. All right, then I think then uh, I'd like to wrap up and uh, thank everybody for coming. And thank you for all the work you do. Um, I know, having two transects myself, I know what, what a terrific amount of effort you put in. And um, I really would like to say a <laughs> sincere thank you for all your work. Philip, a last yes. word? Yes, and I'll say similarly from Yorkshire Wildlife Trust's point of view as well, it's it's definitely um, invaluable to, uh, my, one of my roles is to try and furnish the reserve staff and managers with the data that helps them inform their works. 
and um, this sort of data definitely helps with that. And, and likewise, for a bigger strategic work, having data on on our sites that we can compare to outside of our sites or regionally, nationally, is hugely important. And um, it, with each passing year, each extra year of time series of data just makes it even more valuable and interesting and important. So yes, keep it up and thanks again. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you much, very much, thank everybody. You. Thank uh, you. May, maybe I'll see some of you uh, next next Monday. Bye for now. Bye. See you. Bye. Cheers, Nick. Cheers, Catherine. Yes, bye. See you. Bye.